Hello and welcome back. This is Dawn with another video for Honeybee. Today we are going to be elevating our Christmas packages. We're going to be creating some tags that feature these fun wax seals. Now this is my first foray into wax seals. I avoided them for quite a while. I was a little intimidated by them, but they were much, much easier than I had anticipated. Now there's a few supplies that you're gonna need, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. All right, so the first thing you need is something to melt the wax. So you need a wax melting furnace and a candle. Now do you absolutely have to have this? Could you do it uh, by hand over a candle? Sure, this is just a safer way to do it. It uh, protects the flame and it gives your spoon somewhere to rest. Now the furnace is perfectly sized for these little tea lights. I picked up this whole pack here at uh, the Dollar Tree, Dollar General, somewhere like that for very inexpensive. Now, are they the best? Uh, they don't They don't burn for hours and hours, but they get the job done and they're perfect for this. I trim the wick down and then you just put the furnace over it. And like I mentioned, this protects that flame and it keeps you from having an open candle just sitting there. Now you'll need a wax melting spoon. This is what you're going to melt your wax in. So it's a little domed spoon here. You can see that it's got a little pour spout on one side and it rests perfectly right here in your little wax melting stove. Next, you're gonna need your wax stamper. This is what's going to create the design in your wax seal. And Honey Bee carries many different designs in the store. Um, I've got several here that we're gonna use today. But here you can see the head of that stamper is metal and it's got a design engraved in it. So when we press that into the hot wax, it's going to cool it and create a relief of whatever the design is. And each of these comes with their own handle. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wax because that is kind of the key to this. So Honeybee sells a bunch of different colors and mixes of these wax beads here. And you can see they've got They've got multicolored little packs. They've got some metallic packs. They even have some that you can use to uh, melt with your other colors to maybe switch them up, maybe give it a frosted or a pearlized look. And then they also have a, a pack that I really like. It's the tuxedo. So it's got a black and a white in it. So you can tint your colors, make them lighter or darker. And then like I mentioned, there's a pearl there. So you can give like an opalescent shine to almost any color. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to be working on this silicone wax mat here from Honeybee. It's perfect for creating your seals on. It's got little domes there that you can put your beads in or rest your uh, spoon in or even create your seals in. So I'm going to go ahead and trim down the wick on this candle real quick. We'll get that lit and then I'll put the furnace on top of that. Now you'll notice that my spoon is dirty. Uh, it's got some hard wax in it. I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys how to clean your spoon between colors. It's super easy to do. Um, I like to just take that spoon, put it right back on the furnace, let that uh, leftover wax there melt. And then once that's melted, I'm going to grab a paper towel and clean it out. Now, like I mentioned, you have these little wells here. These are great for holding your wax melts. They're great for creating your uh, seals inside of if you want them perfectly round. And then my stampers over here, I have them resting on a Ziploc bag full of uh, ice water. Now, this is because I'm going to be creating several uh, seals in a row. And when you're mass producing seals, those stampers can heat up and it will uh, degrade the image as you stamp it because it's holding all of that heat. And you want those stampers to cool the the wax right away and get that design hard and trap it in the wax. So in between, I'll rest it on the ice bag here and that'll just keep my stampers nice and cool. So while we're waiting for that wax to heat up to clean our spoon, I'm gonna go ahead and pick out some colors here. Now I was looking at some of the blues. I love these sage, there's like a sagey green blue in here and then there's like a kind of turquoise. This is the Be Bliss mix. And my color palette today is going to be like sage, craft, and white and gold. I love this color combo. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the lighter and the darker of this. Uh, one's kind of sage, one's a little more blue, grayish blue, which you guys know I love my muted colors. So I, I'm going to melt those down to see what they look like. And then I've pulled out this Adventure Awaits, and they've got a bluish color in here too. And I thought I would try that one as well just to see the difference. I can't remember if I do end up trying them or not, but uh, we're going to pull them out. We're going to see. And then because this is my first time messing with the wax seals, 
um, I wanted to familiarize myself with some of those mix-ins. So we're going to grab some of these uh, precious pearls ones. We're going to pull we're going to pull those out. We're going to melt those down. Uh, maybe add them to some colors. Honestly, I can't remember how I made them now, <laughs> but we'll see together in the video. Um, but I do know that I mixed this in with some of the colors and I think that I used, I think I may have used three of these with one of the colors, which turned out to be my favorite. If I, if I remember correctly, we'll find out together. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm cleaning out this spoon. Like I said, I just take a paper towel and gently wipe this out. The spoon is hot. It is very hot. You guys, I burned myself already on it. So yeah, just be careful. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for the fun part. Let's create some wax seals. Now the number of beads that you use is going to depend on how you're uh, using your wax seals. So if I was doing this directly on my project and let's say I was going over ribbon or maybe some fresh greenery, I might use five beads. Four seems to be the magic number for me here when I'm creating them on the mat like this. So I've dropped four beads in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a toothpick just to help speed this along. My spoon wasn't super hot because I had spent some time cleaning it off. The hotter your spoon is, the faster this is going to melt. But again, if you don't want to overheat your spoon, like I don't want to overheat my spoon because I burn myself, <laughs> I like to set it on the silicone mat. And you'll see me do that here in the video. So once it's melted, you're gonna just pour it down onto your silicone mat here. Then you're gonna pick up your stamper and you're just going to set it into the wax. Just let gravity pull it down. You don't wanna push hard. You just wanna let the weight of the stamper itself Pull it, pull it down into the wax. Now, if you have any bubbles in your wax, you can use a pen or a toothpick to just pop those bubbles. And we're gonna let this completely cool in place. Now, since I'm not immediately melting any more wax, I'm gonna take my spoon and I'm gonna put it in, put it right there on my silicone mat. If I was immediately melting wax, I wouldn't worry about this. But um, like I said, I burned myself already. So <laughs> I'm gonna move it. Now, once this is completely cool, that stamper will pull easily from the wax. It'll just lift right off. You'll let this completely cool. You can see I'm feeling on the other side of the mat to see if it's cool underneath. And if it is, I'll go ahead and lift this wax seal off the mat. And there we go. We've got a perfect little wax seal. We're going to go ahead and create another one. So I'm going to drop three in this time. I only used three because I still had some leftover wax in my spoon. You can get away with three and some change. Uh, three doesn't, I mean, you could use three. It doesn't quite give me the look I like. Three and some change works great. Four is perfect. So while that's cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and drop my next three in there. And then you can see here that we've got another one. We'll pour that wax out, drop our stamper, and then we will go ahead and add some more beads to our uh, spoon there. This time I'm gonna do one of, uh, or two of those blues and one of that pearl. Here you can see that uh, reindeer there. But you can see how you kind of get an assembly line going here. Once that's melted, we're gonna pour that one out. This one I didn't stir up. I just let it pour out however it melted into in the spoon and I like the look that this gave. Go ahead and put my stamper in and then I'll go ahead and melt my last wax there. I'm gonna use three of those pearls and then whatever's left in my spoon, which is a little bit of that blue. And then for that one, I'm actually gonna stir it all together because I wanna kind of create a new color. I don't wanna do a marbling look. I want to fully incorporate this. So I'm gonna stir this up really well and make sure I'm picking up all that leftover color from the uh, bottom of the spoon. Here you can see that's what that one looks like that we just did. Now we're gonna pour out our final one. And I love the way this one turned out. I love that precious pearl. It, uh, it's really beautiful. Go ahead and drop that stamper in, let it completely cool. And then once it's cool, we can just lift it off and look at that, look at that color. Ah, oh, so pretty. And again, that was three of those pearls with whatever the blue was left in the uh, spoon there after we had poured our previous wax melt. So there's our wax seals. Let's go ahead and create some tags out of these. Now I pulled out the Lovely Layers Large Snowflakes here. I love this die set and this is the first time I've got a chance to use it. So I thought it was perfect to create some little centerpieces for our wax seals. So I've grabbed white and craft and I've grabbed two of the large snowflakes here. I'm gonna cut 
some pieces of white here down to size for my larger snowflakes. And then I'm gonna cut down the craft here for the smaller snowflake. I'm gonna run those through my die cut machine and I'm gonna cut a total of six of these snowflakes, three of each, because we're gonna layer these up. They're, they, they are the lovely layer snowflakes, so they are all um, designed to layer up to make some beautiful, intricate layered snowflakes. But they're also very beautiful on their own because like all of the lovely layers, there is a bunch of etched detail in each of the layers of these dies. So again, they're beautiful layered or used separately and alone. And I'll show you a close up shot here of some of that detail. Here's the large snowflake. You can see it's got some beautiful etched details in there. And then here's a look at the other one. It also has those details, so beautiful. So we're going to add some liquid adhesive on the back of our smaller snowflake and then we're just going to layer that right on top. What I like to do is take my glue press here and uh, I just add a couple dots of glue on some of the arms of the snowflake and then a little bit right there around that center. We'll line these up and then just glue them together. Now I want to add some more detail. So we're going to use some DMC metallic thread here. I'm going to pull off just a length of this and then I'm going to create, uh, first I'm going to create like a little nest. So I'm going to wrap it around my fingers a couple of times and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to pinch it together in the middle, which it's going to make it look like a uh, multi-layer, uh, multi-strand bow. So if you just take that circle and pinch it together in the center, now it looks like a bow with uh three or four loops. I'm going to take a little bit of washi tape and I'm going to adhere that right in the center. I can use washi tape because I'm going to lay that wax seal right over the center here and that's going to cover up that washi tape. But you can see that this is going to fit beautifully right in the center. And to adhere that I'm going to use the wax seal stickers. These are perfectly sized to fit the back of your wax seals. Now sometimes when you remove these, uh, sometimes the release paper will come away and the sticky part is still on the sheet. When that happens, I just press the seal onto the sheet and then pick it up and I can push it into place. And sometimes the sticky comes off with the release paper. So then I just adhere the whole thing to the back of the seal and then remove the release paper. So uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that because sometimes, like I said, sometimes the release paper comes off and leaves the sticky on the sheet and sometimes the whole thing comes off and then I just adhere it to the seal and remove the release paper. So there we have our centerpiece for our little tags. And speaking of, let's go ahead and get started on those. Now I've pulled out some white, some craft, and a sage. And this is gonna give me some options so that I can create each tag just a little bit different. And for the base of those, we're gonna use the Terrific Tags die here. This has a bunch of great little tag shapes in it. And we're gonna layer two of them. We're gonna layer this banner here and this more square tag here with the notched uh, top. And all of the tags were created the exact same way. So I'm gonna walk you through one of them and then we'll review all of them. So for this one, I'm gonna cut the square tag from one color. In this case, it's gonna be the sage. And the banner tag is gonna be cut from craft. But before we cut that, I'm gonna run this through my paper crimper. You guys know it comes out every Christmas. Um, <laughs> I love it, can't help it. So we're gonna run this through first and then we're gonna die cut. Now you would think that the die cutting would flatten it out and it does flatten it just a tiny bit but you definitely still get all of that um, dimension and the corrugation uh, it doesn't completely flatten it out so it's fine so we're going to go ahead and die cut this now you could do it the other way you could die cut first and then corrugate but your um, when you corrugate the length of your cardstock does shorten up just a bit so this way I made sure that I still had the exact same length of my tag. Um, I'd get the true length. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> when I die cut it, it would be its true length. It wouldn't shorten up on me. Not that in this case it matters, but in a case where it does matter, like say you've created a mat and you want to um, run it through your crimper, make sure you cut it a little bit longer if you've already cut it down to size because when you crimp it, it does shrink up a little bit. So here you can see that it definitely still retains all that definition, but now we have those nice clean edges that die cutting creates. So now all you have to do is assemble. I'm gonna layer my two tags on top of each other and then layer my uh, little center piece here right on top. How cute is that? All right, so I went ahead and finished out the other three, but we have one more detail to add and that is 
adding some gold to the relief here in the wax seals. Now I tried a couple different ways with things that I had on hand. The best way is probably going to be with a gold paint pen, but I don't have one of those. So I grabbed the perfect pearls and a little Versamark in the form of a pen. So this is going to let me control exactly where I'm putting the perfect pearls. So I grabbed my distress emboss embossing, <laughs> embossing pen and I found the bullet nib pen to work the best for me. It gave me the most control to completely cover the design without going outside of it. So you're just going to color over your entire design. And then I'm going to use a small paintbrush here to just pounce the perfect pearls on. I like to use a soft brush, just pick up the perfect pearls, pounce it over the design. And then once the entire design is covered, we're just going to brush away all of the excess with the dry brush. And you can be pretty aggressive here. The Perfect Pearls is going to stick everywhere that there is embossing ink. Now this isn't perfect. Sometimes your brush can uh, smear some of that embossing ink and your Perfect Pearls will stick to it. But even though it's a tiny bit imperfect, it is still the easiest out of everything that I had on hand. Again, if you want it to be super crisp and clean, a paint marker is going to be your best bet. Now here I noticed that I missed a little bit of his chest, so I just used that pen to touch up that spot. I'm adding a little bit more of that Perfect Pearls. Then I'm going to brush all of that Perfect Pearls off of my paintbrush here and come back in and get rid of the excess. So there we go. And there we have it beautifully highlighted and mostly only on our design. Sometimes they get a little bit of fluming in other places, but again, um, I think it adds to the charm. So finally, we're going to want to set those perfect pearls. Water does that. I'm going to take a spray bottle and do a very fine mist and then kind of wave the object through it and it's going to set those perfect pearls. All right, so let's take a look at our finished tags. I absolutely love the way these turned out. I threaded them all together with a little bit of twine and you can see here how gorgeous each of these looked. I did each one just a little bit different. Either the wax seal was different or the color of the cardstock that I used was different. And on this one, I actually glittered the snowflake using the frosted crystal and the distress glitter, which I've done in a previous video. I'll have that linked. So I was super excited to play with these wax seals and I'm so glad that I did because it did open up the floodgates of creativity and I have a couple other projects featuring these wax seals used in different ways. So make sure that you're subscribed if you want to see that video. Remember you'll be able to find all of the featured supplies in the description box below. If you enjoyed this don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And as always I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye!